Linus Torvalds, the individual who created the Linux kernel, also created a code revision tracking system called git. We're going to use git here. The first command is git init, I-N-I-T. When you're in a folder and you type git init and you press enter, it um, creates a database, a hidden database in that folder that keeps track of changes to the files in that that directory. So any files or subdirectories in the directory where you type git init um, subjects those files to tracking under git. And so this is our first batch of changes that we're going to submit to the local git repository. And if you're using a service like GitHub or GitLab or any of the other online hosted uh, versions of Git, whenever you create a new repository using a web browser, behind the scenes, that's what those services do. They, they initiate a Git init. And in the case of GitHub, you have to create a repository. There's not a streamlined, out-of-the-box, straightforward way to do a git init on your local machine and then um, push that to, a, to an account that you have with that service. But anyway, uh, this is a long-form um, git ignore file. And so uh, Git recognizes a special file named .gitignore. And in .gitignore, you can list any of the files you don't want Git to explain to you about. So when you run git status, it will, git status will tell you all the files you haven't updated into Git or you haven't tracked in Git. Some of those files you don't want in Git. And so Git Ignore is your place for declaring those files and folders that you want Git to ignore and not uh, say anything to you about. Of course, Git Ignore itself is tracked by Git. So, you know, it kind of goes full circle that um, the, the file contents themselves may be ignored by Git, but Git will have knowledge of what you ignored. Okay, so here we have added a number of files and um, directories to Git, and that is starting the process of tracking those items. And this is merely an example of starting out revision tracking with Git. The reality is, is you often want um, Git revision tracking from the beginning. And so there are a few points to cover with Git tracking. And that is you generally want to have Git revision control from the beginning. And the biggest benefit of Git is that if you write code and you've went so far with that code and it turns out to be r truly wrong, Git offers you the ability to trivially revert back to the previous version that was correct. That way you're not keeping track of different zip files and different folders with old copies of the code and you're not commenting out code. You can code in a very clean and linear way going towards the future and if you uh, reach a point where the code is not in good shape you can rewind the tape and start, start again. So that is Big benefit number one. Big benefit number two is when you're working in teams, you can actually collaborate and have everyone coordinate their code changes 
through a centralized server, but each workstation has its own copy of the Git database. Then, as you're syncing changes with the centralized server that holds your main Git repository, you can branch off from that. So branching is benefit num major benefit number two. You can create these branches where you can create these code paths and test things out and then if it works out merge them back into the main branch. So we're going to use Git from here on out just as an example of using Git in a very small way.